Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. Mike Delicio, bravissimo, sporadically bored, but never pianissimo. Z, y'all see, voice of the people. Doing it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not. I'm not doing it. Have we funded? No. Then I'm about to break it. some black tape to cover your mouth. I'm with. not doing it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what? I'll give you the first couple, but after that, I'm not doing it. Also, okay. I'm here. I'm not in Iceland unless you guys are all in Iceland <laughs> with me. No. Mathematically, you won't want to be in Iceland in January. I want to go to Iceland, but not in January. I'll tell you the truth, What's it's probably Iceland worse in the Midwest right now than it is in Iceland. Yeah, it's the Midwest. People stay warm out there. Yeah, stay, stay safe. Not frosty. Stay warm. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, so Mike, I brought yes. you the top hat. Oh man, I really was hoping that was for you. You really want me to wear the top hat? No, you don't have to wear the top hat, but it would look good on Mike. It I'll, would look good on I'll him. I'll put it on to try it. Yeah, don't look at do this. It, Mike, don't do it as a trap. This is where like the people, he puts it on and suddenly. All right, you know, folks, all get ready. This is going to be the new. This is way too Tom. Oh your my head. gosh! <laughs> Watch. It's Watch enormous. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. It I can't. It's so big. That's crazy. Tom, you got a, a large noggin. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, we want to do some shout outs to some Kickstarter backers from 2023. We want to say thank you to Michelle, Evan Diesel, Nathan Woolrich, Daniel Weitzman, Eric Fontaine, Travis Johnson, Gene Watson, Jonathan H., Patrick Schumann, Ben, Loki. Ooh. Thanks for not causing as much mischief. Mark Noon, free hugs. <laughs> <laughs> Free hugs. Okay. All right. Happening. Brandon Collins, you know, Sean Roberts. You, you get that name as a kid. Your life's mission is pretty much already mapped out Dave for you. David right? Phillips, Jason Trutman, Lars Hoffman. Thank you all. There's a lot of cool names. There are some very, very cool names there. It's like if you name your kid Jeeves, right? What are they? What else are they going to do for a living? They got answer to be questions. a butler, They're right? Gonna answer questions. They're going to answer questions Ooh, and be a butler. That is a blast or the past. Yeah, you ask like that Jeeves. One? Yeah. Wasn't there they, they 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 went ahead in the future, they made that movie with um, the AI. Was it called AI? Oh, that was a Spielberg movie. I don't know. What well, he's it was actually a Kubrick of. movie that Spielberg finished. It was Kubrick yeah. and Spielberg. Is that what you're Halfway through, of? Okay, yeah, yeah, got in, and Robin Williams was that basically yeah. Ash Jeeves guy. Like, right. Do you have a question? Well, that's right. I forgot yep. he has a cameo in that. Yeah. We got a couple of really nice super chats there. Oh, um, I didn't see the super chats. Yeah. Thank you to Troy for the super chat. Country super chat, chip in to show your love for it. Canada loves you. Canada is our favorite country. Canada is and the then you got best country. Old oh, school Mike up there, and there were more above that. Okay, well, why? Let's go up. Mike, you yes. got your key lime and panada. Tell I people. did. It was fantastic. Everyone had one. It was great. Yeah. There was a, yeah, again, there was a, a, a couple of really nice ones up there. Right Thank there. You, Tim, Tim Evans. Whoa, thanks for all. Whoa, that is great, Tim. Thank yeah. you. And, and Todd. Todd. If we don't pick my favorite game, I'm done with you forever. Okay, Fair well. Fair enough. That's, that's um, reasonable. That is reasonable. <laughs> uh, hey, oh, hey. That was annoying. Yeah, we got a lot oh, of Max Headroom. I'm okay with the gray square. <laughs> okay, so. All right. He was, and Mike were mentioning our, our Kickstarter. Now listen. It is improbable. Okay, yeah, yeah. Nay, inconceivable that we will fund it in the next hour and a half. I don't think it's inconceivable. It's 30. because you can't conceive of it. It doesn't mean That's it's correct. not possible. That's a limiting. How many people are watching this right now? Right. Uh, well, let's see. It looks like 924 at the moment. Okay, so you take 30,000 and you divide it by approximately 1,000 people. That's $30. That's 3,000. You are bad at math. You said 30,000. Yeah, divided by 1,000 people watching. That is 30. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's 3,000. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> you stop it. It's $30 a person. 30 times 1,000 is 30,000. Yeah, I want $1,000 for me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, that's how Mike could go to Iceland. Anyhow. That's right, yeah. I mean, regardless, let's, let's if you make like what happen. we do, if you'd like to see more videos over the course of the year, check out our Kickstarter at DiceTowerKickstarter.com. And thank you to all those of you who already... Nick said there. I look tiny. This is my top ten. I refuse to look tiny. Also, if I do this any longer, I'm going to be in traction. 
Nick, thanks for the roundabout way of calling me and Z fat. No, he said tiny, like height. I'm That's sure not he was what that means necessarily, okay? All right, then I need several more key lime empanada stat. <laughs> No. Yeah. It's a one per six yeah. month. I can't do it. We yeah, could no, not you eat. can't. You're not gonna you're gonna need the money that would take you to Iceland for the insulin. That's correct. Am I doing a QA before the cruise? No. Um, okay, so here we go. Top ten games of all Top time. Top ten. There's always not as much change in these things That's as time true. goes by, but there might be. And either way, it's still fun to talk about these games and staying power means something in this world. Show sure does. But Mike's number one. He used to hate. No, that'd be weird, wouldn't it? No, he no, loves it. Be. Yeah. My number one has been my number one for a while. Let's no, no, no. I meant in the past. I'm not talking about this year. I've had the same number one for a, a few years at least. No, before that? this list, I'm saying. This might be the fourth year. It might not be. You don't know. Fifth year? I don't know. Got it. So, I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> Please back us so we can get Mike his medication. You ain't getting nothing out of me. Let's get to number 10. Here we go. This is even big on my head. Jeez, yeah, it is. Thank That's you, okay. Red. I'm okay with loose hats. Thank you, Red Silence. Is Bulgaria on the way to Iceland? Because I would definitely do that. I'd make a stop in Bulgaria. Bulgaria's pretty nice. I don't know. I actually... You gotta be honest, I don't know a whole lot about Bulgaria. It'd be okay. good to go to. Oh. Also, from Ohio, from Jordan, and need more Z feet from Bill. <laughs> All right, Mike, get to your number 10. Right here. It's a really right. disturbing right. Let's go. Rawr. My number 10 is down two spots, but it's still hanging on to the top 10. It, it was my number one for a time. It's still a great game. Number 10 is Scythe. All right, I... I um, is this your favorite Stonemeyer game? You can't. He, you can't answer that, Mike. It's a trap. I refuse to th answer that question on the grounds that it might incriminate me. Interesting. My number ten is Scythe. This is a game that, uh, when it first came out, it blew me away. Um, I saw it on the table and I was intimidated, but I was intrigued. It was uh, something that uh, once. I learned really what the game is. That intimidation went away, away but the uh, intrigue did not. I love the, the 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 efficiency. This is basically an efficiency game, and to some people, it's almost you know to a default an efficiency game. It's like I can win in 15 turns. Yeah. I don't ever play it like that. I don't tend to play it with Wait, people. People can play side that well. Yes. Oh. Like they'll be like with this faction mix and this technology. The minimum uh, number of moves to win is this, and so I'm going to try to do it in those numbers of turns. I do not want to play with I you. I don't want to play like that. I don't want to play any game with those people I except Time's Up. That'd I don't want to see your face. That is, that is <laughs> correct. So, no, I mean, Scythe is fantastic. Z talked about it already. The threat of uh, battle, war. but not war, but not necessarily always having a lot of war. Different ways to play it. Asymmetrical factions. Max. Everything's better with mechs. Um, I agree with that. And uh, I just love the world building in this game. So, Scythe's still in my top ten. My number ten was my number five last year. It's twice as bad. <laughs> and this is a fantastic and my absolute favorite all versus one game, I think, I hope. Uh, yes. Oh, and uh, it's. Uh, it is from uh, Eric Lang, and right. I like it better than the trilogy. Mm. Oh, the trilogy is so this, great. This could have been part of the trilogy. This could have been a quadrilogy. What are we talking about? I'm, I'm the others, others, baby! Oh, this this oh. game makes Blood Rage mm. look like your sister's faded copy of Phase 10. Mm -hmm. Okay? It makes Rising Sun seem like that busted Chinese checkers you bought down at the Goodwill. It makes Ankh... Yeah, I'm good. I'm done. <laughs> this is a very nice game. Uh, Can't you say nice things instead of tearing down other games? <laughs> Come on, man! <laughs> I only build up by tearing other relative that's things correct. down. That's how, it's, that, that's how it's done. That's how my grandpappy did it. That's how I do it. Uh, this is an all-versus-one game in which one player is playing an evil sin, uh, controlling monsters, and everybody else then is playing this group of... kind of... I don't know. Sci it's a sci-fi kind of setting. 
It's horror sci-fi setting. Yeah, it's, like it's they're futuristic. Like... It's set in like uh, in Britain, I want to say. Mm -hmm. It seems like like and you have action heroes almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. sort of a pulpy actiony kind of thing. Uh, you are uh, com uh, working together to complete whatever objective it is that the mission's giving you before the the bad guys wreck in your your faces. Uh, I really like this one. I like the clarity of purpose here. And I like the simplicity of the mechanisms. There's yeah. tons to do. There's lots of different, you know, uh, moments of action, suspense, and tension. But the mechanisms are cohesive and tell a great story. They work in tandem with what's going on. Uh, it really also lets you roll a whole bunch of dice, which is always mm. fun. So, mm -hmm. my number ten, the others. It's got a guy that can turn into a wolf too. That's right. Wow. Oh yeah, he's cool. Wow. Thank you, Grumpy Lupa, like for the super chat. Yeah. All right. My number 10 was 14 last year, 30 the year before that, 167. And it is amazing. And it's already been on your list and your list and oh, the people's right. choice list. And that that's is right. wow. Marvel United. Four way crossover. Is this yeah. the first one? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I think mm -hmm. uh, we all had uh, Sleeping Gods. And oh, and the people did too, yeah. yeah. Marvel United does seem on, has great games. And they've had some games that aren't so great, but they're right. mostly, I think they're more better than not. However, they were getting big on bloat. Yes. Like a big problem with bloat, like let's say like Scythe and, not Scythe, I'm sorry, uh, Rising Sun and Blood Rage and the yeah. others. Yeah. And there's all this stuff for these mm -hmm. games. They still do all this stuff, but in the last four or five years, they've instituted this plug and play attitude, yeah. which is just amazing. Mm -hmm. Marvel United, pick a villain, pick some heroes, Go. play. Mm -hmm. uh, pick some locations. Yeah. All three of those things plug. And they all work. Yep. I mean, there might. Is there any that like don't work together? Maybe I, I but I can't think of any. I don't think so. I don't think so. It works like like you mentioned. Um, a Marvel Zombies that was on your list already. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Pick some heroes. Pick some villains. Play. Mm -hmm. And this this works for me so well. This allows me to have a huge amount of content for Marvel United and play with it. Yeah. And if I want to play with my favorite characters, I don't have to wait till they're unlocked in the campaign mm -hmm. that I'm going through, or some, you know that. Remember that that terrible Batman monolith game? Like you want to play oh some characters, you there's only like one scenario that uses them. Mm -hmm. I can play any of these here, um, and I would say very strongly that if you're going to get this game, if you watch this and say I would like to get this, I recommend you start with X Men United. Yeah, I think that's sure. the best base set for a gamer to start with. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, there's three starter sets. Uh, I think this one... Technically there's three. Yes, yeah. Marvel United, X-Men, and, and Spider then the Spider-Geddon. Mm -hmm. I think the Spider-Geddon... I think the Spider-Geddon one is the most complex. By far. Yes. And I think that the, uh, the, the Marvel one, the one you just saw, is the easiest one. Mm -hmm. But I also think that there's more content in the X Men one. Yeah, you get equipment in the X Men one. You can play the no, one versus. Don't you? No, 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 no. In the Spider Gen. Oh, that's Spider Gen. But, but in the X Men one, you can play the one versus many. Right. It has a couple characters in there, both a hero and a villain. That's right. There's the anti just a little bit more or stuff. They call them. Yeah, that's Definitely true. Definitely more content. Yes. And it's like someone said. I mean, it's twelve dollars on Amazon know, for yeah. the Marvel United base box. Yeah, I mean, you that's can, ridiculous. You can sample this. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and then if you like it, you can hunt down the expansions and you. You throw them in, and your content goes. And this is one of the few games I have where I've played with every hero and every villain. And so you far, ranked them. You did rank them, like yeah. A crazy person. Yes. Well, I'll wait till the next set comes out. Oh I'm my like, goodness! Oh. At some point, I might rank everything. Uh, that's my number ten. Uh huh. Yeah. The People's Choice number ten is also new to the top ten. It was twelve last year. So it went like this, 56, 26, 30, 13, 12, 10. And this is a wow. slow burn game, but is de facto one of the most popular cooperative games, even though it's fairly complex. And that is Spirit Island. Yeah, wow. this, this is such a popular game. Top 10 material, baby. Mm -hmm. Wow. People, and I think a lot of this is, so when we do these votings, mm -hmm. um, we, we, the way you put them in matters. And I think a lot of people have this as their number one or number yes. two. You yes. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A lot of people really, really love this game. So yep. that's uh, number 10 for you, Spirit Island.
I think you held it a little he last. You had, you had the, the extended version. <laughs> <laughs> that was the GB <laughs> remix right there. All right, my number nine is up seven spots, breaks into the top ten. It is uh, the heaviest, well, yeah, the heaviest game in my top ten. My number nine is Paladins of the West Kingdom. Uh, this is, uh, yes, this is uh, my favorite of the Garfield games. Uh, it, it is... Spoiler alert. A little Are you spoiler. sure Reiner Kenichi is your favorite designer? Are you sure it's not Shem Phillips slash... Um, I just did my favorite designer list not too long ago. Well, I definitely watched it. Uh-huh. Kenichi was my number one, but I don't remember where Shem... I put Shem and Sam together, actually. That's what I'm saying, Shem and Sam. Yeah, yeah. Are you sure they're not moving up there? You really like their games. I love their games. I'm Honestly, gonna... they have a better hit rate than Kenichi does. That's fair, but they yes. have fewer games. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost every designer has a better hit rate than Kenichi, just by sheer volume, probably. Correct, correct. And the the mm. one game in, in the lineup that... I didn't particularly like is getting redone shipwrights, and that's going to be a completely you know new thing. And I even like Shem's stuff that he's done with uh, artist games, the Shelfie Stacker, and uh, so anyway, yeah. All right, Paladins of the West Kingdom is, I believe, the heaviest of the Garfield games, although. Uh, scholars and Wayfarers are right up there, but if you add the expansion to Paladins, it's certainly the most heavy. But this is a game where you are trying to best utilize these different kind of influence tracks. And so one track is going to affect another track, and you've got to kind of keep them in balance. It's got a very unique worker placement element. Uh, this, this series was all playing, you know, riffs on worker placement, the way that the card system works, the way that you're picking your uh, palette in every round. I really like that. It has a central board with hat, which has a little bit of interaction, but it's not the most interactive game. It is just a very thinky, thinky game and very satisfying. Um, I feel like this is a really tight design. Like, I don't feel like, as, as big and sprawling as it is, I don't feel like there's any bloat in this game at all. Okay. Like, everything has a very, very specific and necessary purpose in this game, I believe. And um, I just love it. And, and it's one that um, has grown in esteem. Because when I first started playing it, it was a little much. I was like, wow. This is, might be a step too far, you know, because yeah. I had only, you know, at that point... I feel like that every time I play one of their games, I'm, I swear. Yeah, not anymore, though. I mean... I, I played this I, after yeah. I played, you know... Um, um, Architects. Architects, and then I played this, and sure enough, I had that thought. Mm -hmm. Didn't play the next one. Five counts, never played. Mm -hmm. Now, then I played with you guys not too long ago. The, scholars. Uh, scholars, and again, I'm like, woof. Yeah. This might be one step too far. Yeah. yeah. I don't feel that way now, but I did when I first played it. Thank you, Rod Father, for the super chat. He says from West Palm Beach in Finland. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the All Rod right. Father. My number nine, a spectacular Euro game, uh, Paladins of the West Kingdom. My number nine was my number ten last year. Solidly in my top ten. Has been around my top ten for a long, long time. It is a Catala game. It mm. is one of my favorite card games. This is Abyss. My number Woo! nine is Abyss. Why am I thinking you already said this, or was this on your list? This was on my list, I believe, yeah. Got it. And it's then gonna... you said you had to play the expansion with you. We went on a long thing. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right, my number nine is Abyss. I absolutely adore this game. So good. Um, I love the... Uh, we talked a little bit about how I like teaching even the game when we were talking about it on your list. And I do. I like the way this game flows. I like what's going on in it. You are in this underwater world, and collecting cards, characters, drafting them with this interesting sort of um, mechanism in which you have to make available whatever you reveal to your opponents first. It's like, here, would you like this? You can purchase this from me before I even have a chance to take it for myself. And then using those things to hire these lords, mm. which are a big point generation in the game, and they give you special abilities. So I really like that flow, that cadence of, okay, I'm going to go explore the depth. I'm going to flip over these little cards and explore. Flip over a great card, and of course, the player after you goes, I'll take that. Here's a pearl. Here's your, your meager pay. Whoop. And they take that from you. 
you know, managing your hand, managing what you're doing, getting the right combination. Characters come up and players immediately, of course, are like, ooh, I'm going to try to hire that guy. Let me, let me pay the necessary cards for him. It's got such a good flow. Mm. I'm, I'm now very comfortable with the game having played it so much, so it also feels very comfortable to me. Yeah. Um, I really like this game. It's, I know it's kind of a small card game in a big box. Yeah. This one definitely does not follow that. That thing I like, which is a, a big game in a small box, this is very much the opposite. And I don't care. Yeah, I just but enjoy you, it so much. You could get both expansions in that base box. Oh, easy, so, easily, so, yeah. yeah. Um, I really like this one. So good. Abyss, number nine. All right, thank you, Boosie Bo, for the super chat. Boosie Bo. Boosie Bo. My number nine is another... Simon game. This was my number one in 2018. Still really like it, and I taught it several times last year. Mm. That is Project Elite. You oh. know, this is maybe in the top five biggest blank spots. I've not played this. But yet. you haven't played it. Not mm. played it. Here's the thing. I think you might like it. Yeah, I think you everyone, might not like it. You do? You don't think so? No, no, no. I'm not. I'm just. Oh, you might just, like it. You're also, I'm saying athlete. you might not like That's it. That's true. Yeah. It's a real-time game, mm -hmm. and while I know real-time games cause a lot of stress, this one in particular does it in spurts, which really helps a lot. Yeah, We're going to fight, and I'm telling you, I played almost no other game where I get so concentrated, I don't become my character. This is You don't need to make a chick track about me. But um, I don't... What? That's a very inside joke. But I don't become the character, but I'm pretty close to that. Like, I'm focused on my character. I'm running around, shooting stuff, doing this. Do you see through their eyes? Uh, but I'm saying I'm when when the round a direct question. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but when the round ends, I kind of pull back, uh -huh. and I'm like, "Oh, that's cool, Mike. You went over there and cleared out these guys, and see, you did that over there. It's it's neat." Yeah. But I get so you caught get, up in you my get laser guy, focused, and then you pull out. Yeah, I can't, that's cool. And I, and because of that, I think alpha gaming in this is really hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people are that way. They, you kind of come back. I mean, you might see the people around you doing stuff and everything, but you're really concentrating on yourself. I really like that part of it. And then you discuss strategies. Okay, we're about to do this, this, and this. And then you bring out 600 more aliens. And I also like that, too. You know, I'm tired of playing a game. You know, we just played, uh, what was it, Divination, right? Divination? No, what was that big game? Divinity. Sorry, Divinity. Divinity Original Sin. And yeah, it was yeah. like some gate guard, and we're all, like, off there wailing on this gate guard. We finally took him down. And Project Elite, every time I play it, I kill about 700 aliens. That's you right. know, and That's it just feels nice. great. That's pretty nice. It is the one game, I, I think it's one of the, it looks the way it looks like, like that. Simon, great artwork, all the cool minis. If you, have, if you know nothing about this game and you look at that cover, look at the comp components, watching the game being played is going to throw you for a serious loop. Because it is rolling dice frantically, yeah. throwing miniatures off the board. <laughs> it's just wild That's to crazy. watch it being played. If you're going in fully blind, you're going to have a good time. Wow. All right. It's like, what is happening? This is not what I was expecting. Yeah, it's silly yeah. fun. If you like it, I think there's a good chance I would, too, because you don't also love real-time games. I don't. This is yeah. one of the few games where I'm like... Yeah, let's let's kill okay. some, let's kind of spray and pray, sort of, mm. you know, uh, uh, um, way to attack monsters. And Camille also really likes it too. Oh, I know she loves it. Yeah, Koala Brownie and Just Right. Thank you for the super chats. All right, People's Choice number ten, number nine, <laughs> is a crossover with me and Mike. Yeah, and this is well, no, it's not. Never mind. It's a highly rated game from Stonemaier Games. Mm. It was number 11 last year. It was number 4 the year before that, and this is Viticulture. There you go. Okay. Viticulture has been on the People's Choice now for nine years. It debuted in 2015 wow. at 50. But it has been in the top 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of those years. Um, it was 11 last year, too, So and 11 in 2020. So, basically, yeah. it's, it's been very high. People That's really like this game. It's power still. Yeah, so there you go. Vitty Culture, very popular game. I do. We may need to make also make a trip to Costa Rica while we're going to Iceland because someone in the chat from Costa Rica just said that they have the world's best guava-filled chocolates. That's worth a trip in and of itself. I don't know that I've ever had a guava-filled chocolate. I haven't either, but have I'm, you ever had a chocolate-filled guava? No. It's so good. How would that? Don't ask questions. Okay. The less you know, the better. Let's we'll get to number eight. Okay.
Joshua Curtis, thank you for the super chat. Glad you're enjoying Blue Moon City. Yeah, I got that. All right, we're good. We're All up. right. Oh, thank you, Steve, for the super chat. Back to Kickstarter, he says. Yes, we... we thank you, thank you. We, we Back definitely, to Kickstarter, Mike. All right already. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's okay, then. Okay. You can use it in that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My number eight is up 15 places. Oh, and, uh, yeah, good now. Up into my top ten. Solidly in my top ten. This is a game, another game I tend to teach at every one of our conventions. I have... <laughs> I have basically sold this game to many, many people. Unfortunately, it was a Kickstarter, so it was hard to get a hold of, but I, they, they did another one. It's Aqua Garden. Sorry. I've been I, waiting on this. I've been waiting on this People you give me grief for taking wow, too long to Aqua talk Garden's about Aqua Garden's made your top ten. Yes, this game is spectacular. I love this game. You know, the first time I ever played Aqua Garden's was on a cruise ship. Which is great. Yeah, it's a nice way to, to, to play it. So in Aqua Garden, you are trying to have the best aquarium, and so... Uh, what you have is basically your own personal aquarium board, which is the foreground of the, this picture. And in the background, you can kind of see what looks like uh, another small board. It's a little larger than it looks in this picture, but that's where the sea life is. And so it's one of those, what type of tracks, Tom? Ratchet. Oh, ratchet. It's a ratchet track, according to Tom Vassell, where you can go as far as you want on your turn. <laughs> But whatever you pass, you can't get. And other people can take multiple turns uh, depending upon what you do. And you're placing that sea life in your aquarium, but there are some placement rules. All of those animals consume oxygen. Um, it's just a... What did, what did I miss? No, there's a super chat. I'm oh, just learning. Catch I'm you learning a lot. Yeah, no, there's just a, a delightful flow to this game. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I love it. I love introducing it to people. Maybe you'll teach me one of these days. I'll teach you any time. Let's any go. time. It's Let's a pretty light game, actually. It is. It's it's not. It, there is an expansion that that ups that if you want to. But yeah, it's not a, not a heavy game. Really good game. Wait, what expansion ups it? Beachcombing. I don't have that one. Oh, I backed it, baby. You know, I backed it. I just threw in a bunch of different creatures you can put in or out. Yeah, that's, you can do a lot of that. That's what I have in the box. I even had yes. that stupid game. Penguins versus polar bears, which is not a great game, but yeah. an expansion for this. That's oh yeah, that that the Arctic is. It's called. not a great game. It's a two-player game, yeah. Um, and also, this company, Uchibakoya, the publisher, started as a meeple company. They made custom meeples, oh, and they make great and they ones. make the some of the best meeples in the business. So there you go. My number eight, Aqua Garden. I should go ahead and clarify now. We had about a billion comments about what the ratchet uh, system oh, again, was. Oh, again, huh? It's a one-way street mechanism. Yes. In which you can move as far as you want to in a single direction, but you cannot back up and take something you've already passed. Mm-hmm. Is that... Yeah, Kevin says Ratchet's not happening, but I, I can say whatever word I want, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, Bruce, thanks for the super chat. Wild Child, thanks for the super chat. No, it's not finished being painted. That's, uh, it's, it's on the list. All right. My number eight, right? Yeah. It was number yes, 19 sir. last year. Ooh, lots of moving ups. Uh, lots of moving up. This is a game that is getting a tremendous amount of support. And I'll tell you guys right now, I can see this climbing even higher next year. You're kidding me. Uh, this is on, a, on the up upswing right here, my number eight. This is unmatched. Oh! What'd actually, I, I suspected oh, that this would hit your top five. Mm. Because I, um, I know you love this at this point. I really do. And they just dealt a tremendous... Uh, Blow to yeah, board that sounds game weird. They, they 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 juiced up my love for this even more yeah. with a couple last releases they put out, especially that Tales to Amaze. Yeah, that got me back into Tales Unmatched. to Amaze is a tremendous product, so folks. Good. If you if you dabbled in Unmatched and then sort of fell off, maybe you got release fatigue, what have you. Um, you you got to try that new box. It's got some really neat characters in there. Yeah. But besides that. You can play co-op now with everything that comes in that box and everything that comes in every other <laughs> box. That's great. Yeah. Anything. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, pick a game from your collection. Does it have characters? You want to put Project Elite in here? You can do that now. Mm-hmm. It's not, that's not true. No, uh, yeah, sure to, you can. You can do it. Stick to licensed, unmatched products only, please. <laughs> um, 
There's yeah. so much now, right? And There's they just so released much. the new one, the Samurai. They have Sons a new of Orion or oh, uh... Sons of Origin. So what is it? I thought it was Sons of Origin or no, I don't know. something Origins, right? Um, I don't know. Okay. I don't know what it's called. They have a brand new two pack mm -hmm. with a samurai theme, and I forget which one it's, of the two. Yeah, characters it's like are. Obu. Yeah, it's like they're actual Japanese they're, they're figures. Historic yes. figures. Well, yes. somebody played it. Who played it? I haven't played it yet. Yeah, well, Joey played not. it against yes. Joey, Joey and Chris. And Chris. Okay. Ah, okay, that's what happened. Um, anyway, I love this game. It is so so fun. Another two-player game, though though you can play with more. Yeah. But I generally find myself playing with two. Sun's Origin. Yeah. Uh, Sun's Origin, yeah. There you go. My Sons number... Of oranges. My mm -hmm. number eight, Unmatched. Thanks, Grey Meeple, for the super chat! My number eight was number nine last year. So basically, the same spot. It's been it was it's been nine nine two nine and then one oh three before that. But it shot up to the top. Ain't going anywhere. I play this game a lot, and that's Space Base. Space Base, mm. just I love it. I really do. I it it's one of my favorite games to teach people because the I see the excitement when they get to flip the cards upside down and make their numbers really good. Yeah. And. Of all these games, like it's not even close for me. I know that you love Bad Company. I like Bad Company. I like Machikoro 2. And I like the Valdora one. Some. And, but there's actually oh, not there's not a lot of these out there. And it's a great mechanism. Yeah, Valeria. Yeah. Valeria, the, hey, Valdora. Yeah, yeah. Valeria. Yeah, but Space Base is my favorite. Um, and I think the expansions are fine. Actually, my, my favorite thing for Space Base is these little promo packs, if you can find them. They just add more cool cards with diagonal mm. stuff and all kinds of neat stuff. Love Space Base, my number eight. The People's Choice 8 was eight last year, and eight the year before that. And the year before that, 248. <laughs> Whoa! From 248 to eight? And well, eight. It, it's because it had just Not come out at Essen. Yeah. And now this is the People's... They like this better than your your pick of this quote unquote trilogy, um, and that is Lost Ruins of Arnak. Okay, Lost Ruins of Arnak, very popular game, um, and each expansion comes out. I mean, every year, people say, "Oh, you know, I, I don't know how much I like Lost Ruins of Arnak." And every year at Gen Con, I go to the the CGE room and I see seven hundred million people. No exaggeration. Not a lot. <laughs> Not even a little. Mm. Playing Lost Ruins of Arnak. So, there you go. Juan, thanks for the super chat from Colombia, my favorite country. You're going to start that now after we've had like 87 countries that are not your favorite all of a sudden? Canada already. Mm. You're right. I'm now, out of this. Oh, also, West Palm Beach is my favorite country. <laughs> anyway, Arnak, a lot of people like it. My number seven is up 12 spots. This is my highest ranking, and I'm not spoiling too much here with this. Oh boy, my right highest man. ranking solo only game. This is a solitaire only game. And wow. this is one of the most thematic solo games I've ever played. This is Final Girl, and I'm going to say this is for the system, right? Wow. Um, Final Girl is a game that is very unique in the sense that you have a core box, right? Yes. You need two things to play this game. You need a core box and you need a feature film box, okay? So for kids, this is like a VCR. It, and it actually looks like, it, they, they make them look like VCRs uh, with the boxes. So, But this is basically those slasher movies from the 80s and 90s primarily um, where you are playing as the final girl, which is a horror movie, slasher movie trope where the the killer has killed off all of the different people and it's down to one final girl and she finds a way to, you know, come out uh, at Over, the end. Overcome the... Overcome this, yes. Yeah. And Does she, she when you play? Sometimes. <laughs> it's a tough game, but it's a winnable game. Very much, and I like that too. Um, and so this is a game where if you want to go crazy and get all the stuff, yes, you can. There's a lot of it. But... What most people are going to do is get that core box, which is a very reasonable price, and then they're going to go through and say, oh, man, I really loved Freddy Krueger. I'm going to get the box that's clearly the Freddy Krueger one. It's or not, I love yeah, it's Alien. It's not Freddy Krueger, yeah, but it's yeah. inspired by you know, it. I love Alien. I'm going to get the Xenomorph box. I, I love Poltergeist. I'm going to do that. So 
it's just so easily plug and play modular um, and it's a very clever system. Now, you have to be willing to accept sometimes the dice are not going to work for you. Right. Straight up. You're going to sometimes have, <laughs> you're going to lose very quickly sometimes, but then other times you're going to have these great epic experiences that come down to the last die roll and you feel so triumphant when you pull it off. So in some ways it's like a mini nemesis in that way where, well, you know what I mean, you, you, you might die within your second turn or you may have this great, really suspenseful down to the last minute type of thing. Uh, Final Girl is fantastic. Just a really amazing design. It's built off of an older game called Hostage Negotiator, but the things they added to Final Girl, to me, I mean, I'm, for me, Hostage Negotiator is completely, I, I don't need to ever play that again. Sure. Final Girl. So this entered the People's Choice list at 104 this okay. year. Okay. I, I thought it might be higher. Uh, but it's not. I don't know why. I mean, because the fervor around it seems pretty intense. Well, I, it was difficult to get retail for a while. Now it's much more, I think, readily available. So I do think this will go up. And it's a solo-only game, too. Keep that in mind. That's going to limit its appeal to some extent. Sure. I bet you it's in the top 100 next year. I think so. Yeah. It's also fairly divisive theme, I would think. Not a lot of people are going to be into horror or slasher Absolutely. movies. You know Absolutely. Absolutely, I mean? yeah. If you don't like that... Top, that that topic that that setting you're like eh, yeah I won't, it probably wouldn't be int of interest to you right because yeah. it's very much about that yep all right my number seven was my number twelve last year keeps climbing for me and this is I've mentioned a few times throughout the top one hundred how I'm like oh that's a Euro game that kind of has dug in like a tick you know I've <laughs> said it about a few of them well this is kind of a Euro game that's dug in like a tick for me this is Deus. Wow. Deus. I adore Deus. And there's a few things that if you, if I didn't know the game and you explained it to me, I'd be like, oh, what? I, I tend to like that. Um, the main thing being a bunch of cards with a bunch of powers that I get to play out in front of me and make my tableau distinct. Uh, <laughs> with the one cool thing being every time I add a card to one of those columns... I activate not just that new card and whatever its ability is, but every other card in that column. And I love that stuff. You can mm. create combos by doing that. You know, play a card, it makes me money, and then one of, the, one of those cards, two cards down, is spend money to buy resources. Wonderful. Every time I play a new card in that column, I'll be doing that. Boom, boom. The board movement, the... Ways in which you score are very straightforward. I like the simplicity, really, at the core of this game. But it is so fun to me to manipulate that stuff, to, to have playtime in this sort of pseudo-sandboxy setting, you know? Really enjoy it. Um, not a lot else I can say about this one. Deus does not get a lot of love, but for me, it is top ten material. Hmm. I just seven. realized... I still think it's the look. I think it would have. I think it would have looked if it looked a little better. Yeah. I agree. I just realized that Deus backward is sued. Sued. Have you ever noticed that? No. Tom, what's your number seven? Uh, first of all, I want to say thanks to Mac Voyager and Pixie Head. Uh, who, uh, Pix the Pixie Head? Well, they said that your uh, wife is trying to get a ticket to Iceland or something. No, I think they want to send me on a one-way ticket to Iceland. I don't, ah. know what that, I don't know if I should be taking that as a compliment. I don't <laughs> think I will, actually. <laughs> All right. My number seven was number one twice, and then last year somehow was 11. I don't know what happened. I don't wow. Know. It's, back, <laughs> it's back where it needs to be. The number seven. This is, this is my favorite Rosenberg game. <gasps> Man, this game is so much fun. It, it's it's probably amongst the general populace. It's the fourth most popular by a wide margin, too. Hmm. It's Agricola Caverna. I mean, it's it's. I'm sorry, it's Feast for Odin, Agricola Caverna. Those are the top three. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, I see a, a super chat there. Yeah. Can you scroll up and see who that's from? Uh, Adam. Adam. Sorry, Adam, that you can't come on the cruise, but we appreciate that uh, you gave a super chat. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, thank you. And he gave a shout to Jason, who's helping him. Mm -hmm. Lahav is the fourth <laughs> in this series, probably. Yeah. And it doesn't get nearly as much love, but those who love it, love it. 
and it is so much fun. And it is the epitome of just, I always say, so many good choices. I'm overwhelmed by good choices, and I love games that do that. Because most Euro games don't. They give you yeah. one or two good choices. Ah, it gives me like six, and I'm like, I want to do them all. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll just do this great one. And that's just a lot of fun. You had Feast for Odin on your list earlier, right? I did. Okay, it's, so you had that. You had Caver Caverna, so La Havre. They kind of shuffle around, but yeah. it's, it's La Havre, Caverna, Feast for Odin. Those are my three favorites of the Rosenberg games. I like most of them, mm -hmm. but those three are the strongest three. Okay, nice. Um, so that's my number seven. The People's Choice, number seven, was five last year. The year before that, it was seven. The year before that... It was five. The year before that, it was 23. <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's waffling around here, but again, this Kenner Spiel winner, very, very popular, Quacks of Quellingberg. Oh, okay. still, still this high. We know this was popular, and we know how this was popular, because for we had, very rarely in the library, do we have three copies we of had, a game. We had three We've only this. done that twice, for Wingspan and for quacks. That's true. And we had these the special pieces from BGG, we've replaced them three times. Yeah. Wow. Because it got played that much. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, very popular game. It's going to get played next week, for sure. Absolutely. I just, this one, I've played it now. I took forever to kind of get around to playing yeah. it, and I've, I've now played it. This one eludes me. I don't get this. I like it, right? Because I really like Push Your Luck, but it is not, to me, it's like I don't understand this much love. I yeah. understand, people. I understand. No, I, it's fine. I mean, I'm like glad it. that people seem to adore him. I'm thrilled. Yeah. It's just, I personally don't get it. I thought it was like, oh, this is cute. It's interesting. But the fervor, it's amazing. I know, it really is. That's great. Yeah, hey, absolutely. That's your number seven, Quicks. Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> my number six, folks. My number six is my favorite hidden movement game, and it ain't even close. Okay, is it based on comic books perhaps it is based on comics called the fury of dracula mind <laughs> management mind management is the first game that was released by publisher off the page games and their kind of their their model is that they take graphic novels as ips and they make them into board games. The second one's not out yet, is it? Any day now, I think. Yeah, Harrow County is coming out Any like month. I well, no, I think it'll. Yeah, Any with, moment. Within a month, I Wait, believe. Wait, it's here. That'd be hilarious. If that would be Camille amazing if it was here. Actually, I would take it on the cruise. Um, so this one is a hidden movement game where one player is playing as uh, the. The the, the 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 rogue agents who was trying to to go around and and. Uh, uh, kind of over. They're, they're kind of trying to defeat this mind manager, which, which was this, uh, you know, big government. Actually, not one player. It's an all versus many. It's going to be one person as the kind of the mind management running the things, and then you have the rogue agents who are going around. Okay. Um, just the base is so good, and it is relatively approachable, especially if you do the basic version. There's an advanced version that adds a little bit more. But then what's really innovative about this game is that it has what's called the shift system, which is that if you're playing with a dedicated group of people, um, if the mind management side wins, then the rogue agents is going to get a shift package for them in the next game, which is going to give them a little boost. A shift package. Yeah, so within the box... That sounds like such legalese. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I agree. I prepared a shift package for you. Please I sign this, on the dotted it's line. It's just terminology. What does that mean? I think this is neat, but I... I it's a self-balancing. I understand, but I would recommend this without that I easily. agree. I just think it's so neat. So what's a shift package thing? Basically is, if the mind management side wins, then the rogue agents, the other side, gets basically a little... Sometimes it'll be a card. I don't want to get into it. Something good, like it. something that helps them? A little bit. It's like a legacy game, really. Yeah, and then... If they lose again, they get another one, and they have access to both of those. So you're rewarded for sucking at this Correct. game. Correct. And then if they lose, because... I'll be, I'm playing today. Because I'm now they've got too much power from these shift things, and then the mind management side gets one. And so 
It, or you could just open them too. You don't have to you do that. Could. I don't believe in rewarding losers. <laughs> this is a fantastic game, and this is one example I can think of where I knew nothing about the comic beforehand and played the game, loved the game, sought out the comic, and not only fell in love with this comic, but fell in love with almost all of the work of uh, Matt Kent, who's the, the creator of Mind Management. And so... The um, comic, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. it's so cool. A lot of times, you know, you love the IP and now you're going to try the game. This is the other way around. I read the comic because of this game. Yeah. I would not have otherwise. Right. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that it's, is pretty it's cool. great. Number six, Mind Management. All right, my number six was number 14 last year. It's... Pretty big jump up, I guess. But this game has been around for a long time. Um, hopefully, the uh, the illustrator is joining us in the chat again. Oh. Is it finally Mr. Jack? No. Huh. Um, that's off his list. That's gone. Okay, nobody mm. cares about Mr. Jack except for the artwork if you happen to be watching. <laughs> I'm talking about Last Bastion. Whoa! Last Bastion, which is a re-implementation of Ghost Stories not on the list, um, mm -hmm. is a cooperative game. It's a one of the first games I ever played from uh, Antoine Boza, and it is a kind of a tower defense game, maybe? Mm -hmm. You have, in this one, these monsters coming in from the sides, and you have to defend this castle. You are um, going to move around and either attack whatever you're facing at the walls or ask for help from the tile, one of the nine tiles you happen to be sitting on. That's the general flow. You do something good, you do something bad. You, well, it's actually bad first. You bring out some baddies, then yeah. you, you try to defend this castle. I love the way in which they streamlined ghost stories in mm. this one. The game's a lot easier, for one thing. Uh, and the, there's more powers, there's more abilities. I kind of, in my heart of hearts, miss... And have a special place for ghost stories in yeah, the setting. Yeah, I do too. Such a cool location. Such a, it's such a beautiful game. Such a neat setting. But this is the better game, the more modern design. So this is the <laughs> one that gets the nod. You're getting got by Piero. Uh, <laughs> Last Bastion, not ghost stories. Are you crazy, bro? I know, I know. Um, they're both fantastic yeah. games. Pick either one. This one, like I said, I just get I I. I have an easier time teaching this to people. Yeah. You know, and we might have a chance to actually win. That's also nice. Yeah, so. I, I like I like ghost stories. I do too. Shut up. Matt Kent's in the in the live chat too, so that's awesome. Check that's out his work six. if you've not. Oh, that's really cool, Mike. Yeah. yeah. All right, my number six debuted last year at number seven, and this is my third and final Simon game mm. on this list. Also love it because of the plug and play, and it is also my favorite dungeon crawler game, and that is Massive Darkness 2. Two Electrius Boogaloo. Hi. Oh, oh, hellscape. Hellscape. <laughs> and I just think I don't even like that. I don't even like the theming of it that much, but I just love this game. I've I like dungeon crawls, and they have been getting increasingly more complex as yes. time goes by. Gloomhaven started that trend, right? And mm. I like Gloomhaven, but sometimes I want to kick the door in and fight monsters. Actually, I want to do that a lot. Right. And this game lets you do that not only just by doing that, but each class in this game is essentially playing their own little mini game. Mm -hmm. Whether it's drawing from a bag, or a little deck building, or um, moving magic spells around, or reanimating dead people. They all have a very different feel to them. Yeah, manipulating tracks. It's mm -hmm. like mechanically they each have their own little thing. It's such a cool idea. Yeah, and then the monsters, you can plug and play what monsters you want to fight against. Right. You just you you just draw a card and that's the monster that you're playing and you can manipulate that deck and the big bad guys. And there is a campaign box, but you don't have to use it. Yes. You can just so yeah, yeah. do it one shot. Yeah. Yes, I really, really love Massive Darkness. It's so much fun. And Massive Darkness too. Very, because there is very a difference. Big distinction, yeah. Massive Darkness is okay. Mads of Darkness 2, amazing. Mm -hmm. I really love it. Just a blast. I agree. What do the people think, The Tom? people's number six was also their number seven last year. Oh. And before that, it was five, six, and 69. This is a crossover with both of you. Very popular game. Another game I've had to have multiple copies in the library. 
and that is Everdell. Not yes. putting that big copy in, though. Mm -hmm. Everdell, yes. This yes, one, yes, yes. This one, I think this this game is a catalyst for cute animal themes. This was the first big one I know about that had, you know, the red wall, whatever, you know, uh, yeah. watership yeah, down type right. thing going on. I think you're right. There are other ones, and also I believe this is the game that, I don't think it's his first illustrated game, but it definitely put Andrew Bosley in the limelight. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I yeah, this, I think, I think Andrew Bosley's artwork was as important to the success of this game as the design was. I agree. Yeah, and also the pieces don't hurt. No. It's, the whole, it's a great package, and it's an unfolding game yep. in a sense that it starts small and gets bigger as it goes by, and I know that's an easy, that makes it easier to teach, actually. Yep. So, Everdell, you're number six. All right, my number five is my favorite game to play with five players. And I didn't work it out that way, but it is kind of nice that it worked out that way. My number five is Smartphone Inc. This wow. is a game that probably had the biggest disconnect between the way it looked and the experience that I had. I've mentioned the story before, so I won't get too much into it, but I basically only played this for the first time as a favor to a friend because they wanted to play it at five, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll sit down and play this. I saw the player screen with the literal multiplication table on the back, and I'm like, what did I get myself into? Did you play this before you were with the Dice Tower? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't the friend then, that's good. No, it was not you. It was somebody else <laughs> that asked me, Andrew. Um, and by the end of the second round, I was like, I love this game. And it breaks so many things. It's, it's, it's really an economic game. Yep. I don't usually love you know economic games. It's got math. All, it basically is rooted in math, right? Which is gross. Which I usually have very bad time with. <coughs> History teacher. Yeah, that's why, right? Um, I love this game. Again, at five, it's spectacular. At four, it's still really good. If you want to go with a lower player count, you really need the, the expansion to do that and have a different, a totally different map. But I know the theme doesn't appeal to a lot of people. I know the look doesn't appeal to a lot of people. But this is such a good mechanical game. It has everything you know, need to know basically right there on the board. I love how easy it is to teach this game. Yeah. We're going to do these eight things five times. Boom, 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 boom. You physically move a thing right across. You know what you're doing. The way that the, the components are set up, you know when they take place. Such a solid game. My number five, Smartphone Inc. My number five was my number two last year. And it's been my number one uh, for many years. My number five is Pandemic. What? Uh, I just put Pandemic because whatever, uh, pick one. Um, <laughs> pandemic, Pandemic Iberia has been on my list in the past. I like most of them, okay? It's mm -hmm. a lot easier for me to list the ones I don't like, which is pointless. Uh, um, this is... Like many other games we've discussed here today that have done something important for a sector of the hobby, Pandemic is a clear, clear um, front runner for being inspirational to cooperative games and that explosion of cooperative games. True. There are, it's ridiculous in this day and age when we get a new game and somebody starts to teach you pretty quickly, unless they <laughs> say it themselves, I will interrupt them and be like, uh, the cooperative or competitive? Yeah, yeah. That's think back to two thousand. I don't know six before this came out. <laughs> not a question. Right, you didn't ask it if the game not. was cooperative. That's not a thing. That no. like that uh, that would have made if you asked that they're like, what are you talking about? Yeah, cooperative. It's not a kids game. Yeah. Why would it be cooperative? Right. That was the the idea. If it's co-op, it's probably a kids game. So this right there was so important. But besides that. I don't care how important it is, the game is fantastic and it's incredibly fun to play. There's a bunch of expansions, they're pretty good. Um, the tension, the interest in this, the cooperation, that feeling of, which Mike described a little bit when he was talking about Blue Moon uh, City, that feeling of, 
I don't think we can do yeah. the getting to this place before we hit that card in the deck because... Well, hold on. What if you fly? What if we take a charter flight, mm. charter flight <laughs> from here yeah. to here and then walk down? I pass you the card. We can do it. We mm. can solve this issue. The puzzliness is so good. Um, this is a fantastic game. You've Probably all of you have already played it. I would also. think some iteration so, of it, yeah. Anyway, my number five, Pandemic. My number five has been on the list since 2010, and it's reached as high as two. It was eight last mm. year, and every time I play this, I have a great time. Every new faction, I play this all the time, Summoner Wars. Summoner, Summoner Wars, Wars first edition. Actually, I think I could say Summoner Wars at this point because this is the only one that's available Master in stores. Set, right? It's not even, it's not, I, I just don't want to confuse people because right. it doesn't say Summoner Wars two on the box. Yeah, that's true. It's just Summoner Wars. They, they phase the other one out. And even if you accidentally bought the first one, who cares? Mm -hmm. It was still my top ten. I just this one is better. That's all. But every they keep coming out with new factions, and they tell me they ain't slowing down. And every faction feels so different. Yeah, it's crazy. They also yeah. feel incredibly balanced. Um, it's also one of the few games that my win ratio versus Roy is higher than my lose ratio. It's actually the only game that's that way. Have you played it with Jason? Replay the tapes. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's pretty close. You wreck me sometimes, for sure. Jason, have I played with you? Well, I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's higher than any other right. game with you. Um, uh, no. Yeah, you probably shouldn't. You want to still keep it in your top five. You probably I shouldn't. Know. I could beat Jason at this. Ooh. I could beat Jason at this because I don't think he... You could beat Jason with this. <laughs> it's a fairly large box. <laughs> it is, yeah. Jason's a fairly small man. Correct. Uh, Stephen Ekman says, I taught him this. Nice. And thank you for the super chat. And also, I didn't mention, thank you, Dan Gross, for the super chat. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so that's my number five. Lolo this one. All right. People's Choice number five yeah. was their number three last year, and then four years in a row it was number two. Oh! Finally, it's cracking and falling <laughs> to, oh. to five. Wow. But actually, I do suspect it will drop a bit as time goes by, and this is terraforming Mars. Yeah. What right. a juggernaut. Oh! Hey! Yeah, Terraforming Mars. So here's the thing. Terraforming Mars, they had the card game come out, which mm -hmm. is on the t People's Choice Top 100. Mm. The dice game, which shockingly is not. I'm <laughs> kidding. That's not a shock. Um, and I bet the card game will eventually fall off. This one's going to last for a really long time. Yeah. Yes, people say, well, Earth replaced this or um, it did for Ark me. Nova or whatever. You know, This still is that popular. It is. I don't play it much these days, but that's mostly because it has such a great app. I was going to say, yeah, you play it on the and app. And the app is, I, I, that's, I get my Terraforming Mars fix. But there mm -hmm. is something to be said. This whole, the Terraforming Mars, one of the unique things about it, besides the cards being used and stuff, is the three different goals that everyone's working to. Yeah, it's sort yeah. of a cooperative game. But as those goals get accomplished, as you're trying to increase the air quality, the water the number the of oceans of and the, the temperature yeah. mm -hmm. that affects what cards can be played or not played. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. And it is thematic. It's very so, thematic, actually. Mm -hmm. This is a Euro game that is yeah. steeped in That's theme. true. That is true. And it's unbelievable that this game is so highly rated when the components are fairly ugly. The yeah. artwork's not great. Nah. There are more upgrades existing for Terraforming Mars <laughs> than any other five games. <laughs> uh, it's re I mean, it's crazy. They put out yeah. the big box a couple years ago. Ten years late. It's not ten years. It's not been out that long. But how long has this been on the people's choice here? Mm. It is uh, only seven years. Okay. So it seems like it's been out longer than that. But yeah, right. Very very popular game. Terraforming Mars. You're number five. Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right. My Mike, number what do you got? four. These is, are getting good now, Tom. These are so good. <laughs> My number four is interestingly, Tom brought up a game that does something that uh, this game does did slightly earlier, but it's not the first time it's been done. This is Merchant's Cove, and what I'm talking about is there that go. there you've got is. different asymmetric factions, and they're all playing their own different mini game in service of a metagame that everyone is playing, and I think the reason you don't like it as much is you don't like that metagame, which is... You're right, I don't the, like the main game. Yeah, which is the buying and selling, uh, uh, well, the making and selling of goods to merchants that come to these piers on those ships. And so I 
just have always adored this game, and I, I like introducing it to people as well. I usually, almost every convention, get someone asking me if I can teach them Merchant's Cove, and it's not a, a, a simple teach because you teach the main game, which is a relatively simple uh, economic type of a game, uh, but then you have to show each player how their faction plays, because if you're the blacksmith, you're going to be playing a dice placement game. If you are the alchemist, you're going to be playing like a little mini potion explosion marble type game. If you're playing the captain, you're doing push your luck with a spinner, things along those lines. And they all uh, are slightly different. There are a couple of actions that everyone does that you kind of can anchor everybody. Uh, but I just absolutely love uh, Merchant's Cove. They're going to be coming out with some new uh, factions. Uh, are they? Yeah, they, 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 the Kickstarter was quite a while back. I'm assuming it's going to deliver relatively soon. Any moment now. This year, it's I believe. It's here. Yes. But yeah, I just love, uh, love, love, love Merchant's Cove. It's a light, asymmetric game, and that, I think, is a, a nice little niche that uh, is hard to find. Usually, if it's asymmetric, it's either barely asymmetric sure. or root, you know. Or complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Gotcha, so, yeah. really like it. This is essentially a family weight game. Well, my number four was my number four last year. It's a crossover. Um, Near the top of the list here with uh, one Roy Candidate. This is Marvel Champions. Mm. You don't know. It might have fallen off Roy's list. <laughs> nah. I know. Nah. Uh, Marvel Champions there was not is... There sarcasm in that. Try to get... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was. <laughs> uh, Marvel Champions is a fantastic living card game. Cooperative or solo, in which you are, of course, uh, going to be these uh, Marvel superheroes taking on some big, bad, incredibly modular system. And it's this high up on the list because it does some of the things that the other living card games that are cooperative do in a much more streamlined way. Plus, I, love, I like the theme. Did you say this was four last year? Yeah. So it was higher than Arkham last year. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I this sees way more table time. That's the thing. I thought you liked Arkham better than Marvel. I like Arkham. Not the game, but I mean the themes. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I don't know. I like them about the same. I would say. Okay. I love I love Cthulhu stuff and I love mm. Marvel stuff. Yeah. So Marvel Zombie Champions would be amazing. Marvel Zombies is from my top one hundred mm. this <laughs> Marvel year. Marvel Zombie Champions. Oh wow, that'd be amazing. I mean, if they did that. I'm I'm there. I gotta figure that's gonna happen, right? Oh my goodness! I'm done talking about this. <laughs> oh, I salivate about the possibilities. <laughs> this is great. This is super super fun. Um, taking your deck, your character up against whatever baddie you're playing. It, like I said, it's way faster to set up and get going. The game's not that short. It's still gonna kind of be a long fight sometimes, but it's um, simpler to get going, and that just in and of itself gives it a big boost. My number four. My number four has been on my list since 2009. Uh, last year, it reached a height of two. Hmm. Now it's just it's twice as bad at four. Correct. Yeah. Still really like this game, and I'm hoping to play it this coming week, and that is Dominion. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's not coming on the cruise. I'm sorry. Wait, what? Kenny said it went overboard. <laughs> you <don't. laughs> I have half a shelf devoted to Dune. Dominion. Dominion. Yeah, Dude, yeah. I love it. Dominion. <laughs> I have, what, five boxes in the library? Well, you know. You don't like Dominion. Box overboard. No, I do like Dominion. It's not in my top 100, but yeah, no, it's a great pure deck building game. It really but, is, yeah. but I also like the fact that, I mean, every time I play, it's different. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it, and I like the pure games. I like complex complexity, but yeah. Dominion and Space Space are like, they both have that very straightforward, yeah. we're just sitting down playing it. And I like the puzzle. You put out the 10 cards and you figure out, Huh, I wonder which of these is the best. Yeah. And I always explore. Every time I play Dominion, some people are like, oh, big money. It's really funny. There's definitely, when someone plays Dominion, they play it, they're like, this is amazing. And if they really get into it after a year or maybe six months, they're like, money's the best way to play. And then they either quit, because it's whatever, or they stick around and they're like, maybe not actually. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, who cares? Right. I'm going to buy these cool cards because they're cool. So. Yeah. 
What do you think? Do you think money is... I don't know. I don't. I don't mess with it enough to play. I mean, I always tell people buy money. Obviously, you get money. You you, you shouldn't get so caught up in the special cards. You don't buy any coin. Yeah. But whatever. I don't always play with the platinum now. I used to do that all the time. I used to always play with platinum. Now it depends on how expensive the cards are. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm still waiting for an iOS <laughs> app for uh, this. It would be nice. I would play. I would play that quite a bit. I really would. And I mean. This is not a, people are like calling us Apple's app. I'm not. It's just what I happen to have. Right. I'm not buying a new phone just so I can play Dominion. Especially not an Android <laughs> piece of crap. <laughs> Tom's words. <laughs> We're right. never going to get out of that one. All right. <clears throat> Your number four was also four last year. The year before that, it was three, then three. Then it was one, number one three years in a row. It debuted Ooh. at 19. Whoa. That's a pretty high debut. This is a very popular. This is finally. Now that we're at number four, the highest ranked Stonemaier game. Oh! No, I'm still wrong! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> nice, nice uh, move. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, side, side. Oh, side. yeah, you know, you're definitely not, that, this is not the highest ranked, Tom. What's the matter with you? All right, so side. <laughs> oh, that's so stupid. You're anyway, up. side, mm -hmm. very popular game. Yes. And it's always played. Yeah. Every kind we go to. A game of this kind of weight, it's not the heaviest game, but it's certainly not light. This big, this high in the list is pretty impressive. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's so much fun. It's also been around for a while, right? No, that's it's, true, it's too. Yeah, what design. did I say? It's, it's been on the people's choice now for eight years straight. Okay. Wow. Since it came out. Wow. So, number four, Scythe. Yeah, I know. You messed up big time, A.A. Yeah, Ron. you got got. Big time. All right, what's your number three? My number three is up four spots. And Z mentioned a game uh, in this very list earlier <laughs> called <laughs> The <laughs> Others, yes, which is good. a one versus many game by Eric Lang. And I like The Others quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But a cooperative version of The Others, now you have gotten into my top three. This is Cthulhu Death May Die. Yes. My goodness, I love this game. Um, it does so many things right. It provides an epic, pulpy game experience. Mm -hmm. Very modular, but extremely plug and play. Yes. For a game like this, as modular as it is, to be able to set it up as quickly as you can, pick a great old one. It's going to have cards. It's going to have the the mini right basically right, right. and then pick your players and then pl pick a scenario box right mix those together boom i'm telling you the plug and play thing is just it so really great is. it's, it's incredible the way to go. it's so it's such a and nice nobody, low barrier nobody's to really entry. copying it no one no. else does that because it's incredibly hard to do right I this assume, is yeah. this is eric lang and rob davio and I, again, one thing I don't know that I'm assuming Davio was maybe mostly for the, the story end of things. I'm sure he contributed to the design too. But one of the things you can say is that a lot of these games, from, from Lang especially, are super streamlined. Like the rule set in Cthulhu Death May Die, it's not Very much. Clean. Yeah, it's this is much. a little bit like the others in that way. Yeah. This it's kind of inspired by, I would right. say, even. And that's part of the Lang part yeah. of the design. Gosh, yeah. actually, thinking about it, Davio has pretty tight rule sets, too. Sure, so I'm sure, sure, sure the two of them together. Um, anyway, I, I love this. I love this game. Uh, it's hard. <clears throat> it's very hard. I will say that some scenarios are easier than others. Yes. How about um, Cthulhu, the giant Cthulhu? How hard is that? We almost won. You yeah, lost. We yeah, did. We got close. We got very close. close. Yeah, but it, we, we, we rocked it. Okay? We did. Actually, we did very good in that in that session. Um, yeah. It's, yeah it, it's, Plus, I've seen things now that I <laughs> that's correct. I'll never forget. The, he's, he's, explored <laughs> the, he's explored the cosmic crack. You can crack. blame Roy for painting that one. Yeah. The cosmic crack? <laughs> yeah. That's a good name for a game. There it is. The, the cosmic, cosmic crack. The, the, the cosmic fissure, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, Cthulhu Death May Die is a splendid, outstanding, incredible design. I remember hearing them talk about it, Lang and Davio, on, uh, at Dice Tower East. This game did have an immense build-up to yes. it. Yes. People were very pumped sure. about yep. it. Yeah, sure. And it was a slow burn. It was. Both, both for, for Mike and myself. Yep. Because, Mike, it happened again. <laughs> wow. Twice in one. That's one amazing. This is also my number three. That's amazing. We have crossed over... 
again. But you cross over Cthulhu now, there ain't no coming back from that. Mm -hmm. I agree with everything Mike just said, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, again, this is one of the few games, and Tom's kind of joked about, like, you know, playing a game first time and rating it like a five or a six yeah. and it's sort of growing on you. That did not rate this that low. I did. Hmm. But it's been definitely a build. Mm -hmm. It's that sort of like, I like it. I got yeah. some big issues. Yeah. And the more you play, the more those issues c c continue to take a back seat <laughs> right. to the fun you're having. And yep. I still have those problems. Mm -hmm. I still think the miniatures They're too barely the fit spot. on yeah. the stupid tiles. Yeah. But I care way less right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm having such a good time with the game, the characters, the stories it tells us. Having um, a good time. Yeah, I believe I gave this a 7.5. Yeah, I did something similar. I think like it's probably idiot. close to a 10 for me now. I give it a 10, right? Yeah, this... 3 is not a 10. No yeah, then, a 10. then, then no, 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 I'm going to no, come no, out and no, say no. it. It's a 10. I rate this a 10.3. Oh, what about you? 10.5. I'm going to go as high as 10.7. Do it. Do it. I can do 10.8. Raw. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You Either win. one of you are willing to go to 11. All no, right. No, that's fine. crazy talk. All right. My number three is. It's been on my list. number three. That was oh, you just did it. You crossed yeah, yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. Tom, number three is Cthulhu Death May Die. Thank you, Nick, for the super chat. Um, how many plays of your each of your top three games? Well, we'll get to that oh. in a second. My number three has been on my list since the beginning. It debuted at number two, and it's been on the list since the beginning. This was my, when I was 13, this was my number one game. Oh, wow. And it was when you my were 13 number, years old? Yeah, <laughs> and, when, and when I was uh, for on the top 100 list, it's one, two, three, four, five, seven years straight it was number one. Yeah, it hasn't, Good. didn't this drop a little bit last year? Last year it was three also. Oh, okay. Cosmic right. Encounter. All right. You used to love Cosmic. Do you remember those days, <laughs> yeah, Tom? Yeah. Do you remember? It could be called Cosmic Crack. It's Cosmic <laughs> Encounter. I play this all the time. Every year at conventions I play it because it's just amazing. I love everything about this game. And there's more expansions than I ever expected. Like they could have, I thought they were going to stop like three expansions ago. And I would have been happy. No. Yeah. I'm still happy. I now have, I have to make a traveling kit when I go. <laughs> when we went to uh, the World Series of Board Game, I made a little traveling kit of Tom's co extra cosmic stuff that's not in the base game. Yeah. And took it with me so I could play cosmic with people. Because if you go to a library, there's often just base cosmic. And it nah. sickens you, right? Mm -hmm. oh, I mean, it's fine, but I want more. And, and in fact, that's the, it still bugs me that the base cosmic encounter game for, like, from Fantasy Flight, which has been out since, what, 2008, has five players. And it's best, for me, at six. It's mm. great at six. Yeah. So, I like it at five the best, I think. Well, five is not bad. I just wish there was six in the box. It's one of the few games I want more players for. Sure. Thank you, Webhead, for the super chat. But I love Cosmic. Easy number three for me. The crazy thing is I I enjoyed my first play so much, I'm not sure I want to play it again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I have this kind of pure, you know, thing. And I, I don't know that I w I certainly couldn't teach it. You know what I mean? I just, yeah. again, this was a situation where I had the best possible first experience with this game you could have. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So. Thank you again, Pixie Head, for the, the super chat. All mm -hmm. right. People's Choice number three was six last year, 11 the year before that, and 178 the year before that. It is rising high. Wow. Um, and this is the very popular Dune Imperium. Mm. Oh it's there, man. Goodness, this is, is the clear. So popular. The fans of really this popular. game are voracious fans of this game. Wow. Wow. Roy has played with... I mean, Mr. Beast is a fan yeah. of this game, and uh, there's all. I mean, there's a lot of people like this game because it's one of the few Euro. It's one of the few almost perfect hybrid games. There's war, there's Euro game mechanisms, mm -hmm. there's deck building, mm -hmm. there's worker placement, and all of it works so thematically. Yes, I mean, you if if you're playing Harkonnen, you feel a little bit Harkonnen. You know, you go, you make a deal with the Fremen so that you Love get water the in the desert. We're tired like this, the Fremen and myself. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's Harkonnen, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. According to the movie, it is. <laughs> Would you like to offer me some water? No. <laughs> I'm honoring favorite. you. I'm honoring you. That's one of my you. favorite scenes where I went spits and are ready to like mm. start a fight. I know, the guy spits, he's like, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great honor. When I, I spit can't on you. wait. I am so, I was so bummed when I heard this movie slip. Uh, the sequel. I know. 
Because I love that first Dune. The first movie, uh, the first movie, Dune is remake. great. It's this year. No, but this year has just begun. I know. It's, it's pretty much the only just begun. It's pretty much the only movie to look forward to this year. <laughs> no. Godzilla, year, year one. Go watch that. We minus watch. one? Godzilla yeah. minus one? Minus one, yeah. yeah. You should watch I said, it. I said, yeah. Anyway, you're number three, Dune Imperium. <laughs> All right, we don't have a whole lot of time before Z's prediction has to uh, come to fruition, whether or not. I we're know, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, where I'll see we where we're at. Where are we we're at? Kick Let's see where we're at. Point in time. I'm telling you, I, mean, we're at the I, point said, where we're I said we would fund while live with our top 100 games of all time, and I'm only willing to stretch this by two, three hours at the most. After uh, that, I, I will need. We to still need call. thirty thousand or twenty nine thousand. Okay, well, let's get on it. <laughs> All right, I'll talk Take slowly. Top operators are standing <laughs> by. Take your time, Mike. Yeah. Right, what's your number two? All right, my number two is down one spot. Well, since I don't remember what your number one was uh, last year, we're fine. About? It's been my number one for a number of years, Tom. My number two is Dwellings of Elder Vale. Well, hasn't been out. It's, the game hasn't even been out that long. What are you talking about? Uh, it's been out longer than I think it's you Mike's think. Mike's favorite game. Like four years. I think it was five years ago it came out. It could be four, but I think it's five now. Mike, it's, huh. it's oh my gosh. Yeah, I have a new number one. My, but what is it? I'm not talking about number one right now. I'm talking about number two. A fantastic game, a 10. Uh, Dwellings of Eldervale is an incredible design by Luke Laurie, who is, I think, an underrated designer, quite honestly. He was also a co-designer on Manhattan Project Energy Empire. Yes, yes. He's done a lot of cryo, a game that I know Roy likes a whole lot. I knew it. All right. Four years. Whatever. Get over it. Um, <laughs> this is... <laughs> no, so this is a game that, unfortunately, it was really hard to get a hold of for so long because it was a big, grandiose Kickstarter. Yes. It's in its, like, third printing now, and I think now you can finally get a retail edition of this relatively easily. I'm not positive. Um, but it's so good. It's so good. It's got a, a modular board that's made up of these different tiles that you can see there. Um, and you have asymmetrical player powers. So uh, everyone works a little bit differently, but you're still using the same core rules. And it has a, um, a player-driven pacing and end of the game. I always love that. It has a very clever system where you are getting cards and they're being placed in front of you in a tableau. There's nothing new about that. Sure. But when you, you are finally at the time when you're going to recall all of your workers, now you're recalling those workers and placing them on these cards that you have been building up in front of you to get stuff. That is so satisfying because normally your recall action feels like a lost turn. It does not here because you're getting stuff right. sure. when you recall. Um, and some of the cards will only trigger with specific characters. So you need to get your dragon out there so that when it comes back, it can trigger that card that only the dragon can, can trigger. Um, you can dragon even. Spam. Yeah, you can take control of these big, Ooh, huge so monsters sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Such a good game, a uh, very big, lavish production. It is very big. Um, the and, only the only game I know of with optional bases for the miniatures that yes. makes noise, that makes sounds. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. Wow. I Number cannot two. find this on the People's Choice. Have we gone over this yet? Dwellings? I don't think it may not be on the People's I Choice. I doubt it's in the top 100, It's right? a big, big it's game that a lot that of people. Huh? Top mm. three, check the top 300. The top three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, my number two was my number one last year. Mm. And it's been my number one, certainly longer than 2020. My number two is 51st State. So it's dropped from my number one to my number so two as well. So you have a number new number one as well. I have a new number one as well. <laughs> we both do. Maybe yeah. Tom as well. I'm excited, okay? Tom is a beast. Tom's a beast. I'm trusting for one second. Maybe. Um, maybe the people too. The humans? <laughs> oh my goodness me. 51st State is... 
<laughs> what happened? Mike's number one Viking seesaw. It's already on my list. Yeah, it's already on there. He does have it on there twice. So <laughs> yeah, the crew deep sea. <laughs> that's Mike's number mm, one. That's oh, that would be great. That'd be fantastic. Um, I'd pay money to watch that show. Fifty <laughs> first date is uh, incredible. It is a. I feel like I'm again a broken record. It's a card driven game with cards with powers. It has that theme I love, the post-apocalyptic thing, and you are rebuilding a little sliver of this ruined world for yourself again. You do so by finding new locations and new people and paying for those cards to go out on the table in front of you. Mm. Um, I love the resource management in this, which is tremendously strong. I love the engine building, which is tremendously strong. The way people value different cards will be very different, of course, based on the, 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 the state that they're playing in. And the expansions are fantastic. Mm. There is this new super set, whatever it's called, complete master set is the previous, you know, the, the, the previous printing, the new one is like mega super everything box, and it's chock full of stuff. Uh, but even without that stuff, this cover you're seeing there, is a tremendous card game, and if you like post-apocalyptic settings, and you like resource management, I recommend you try out 51st State, my number two. All right. Dwellings was apparently 44 on the people's choices here. Ah, uh, fact-checking! 44. Tom, what's wrong with you, man? Uh, it, no, it was World Wonders. No, it's my 44. It's hard to keep all these lists! Okay, you know what? It doesn't matter. Oh, Shocking. I have 44 on the back side of this. That's correct. All right. There we go. All right, my number two has been on the list for three years, and last year and the year before, it was number one. Ah! <laughs> wow. My number two is a still great game. I just played it a couple weeks ago. Art Nova. Love. Art Nova is dead. Okay, Art Nova is dead. Wow, that means I know Tom's new number one. This is amazing. You Ark, know Tom's number I one? I do, yeah. Ark Nova is a fantastic game. It really is. Wow. It is, again, I don't like Euro games, but this one yeah. somehow slips you through hate, along you with hate other those 20 Euro ones. Games. And you oh. hate zoo games, too. Oh, no, that's... <laughs> Look at that. That's so much. Yeah. I'll tell you, if, if I had made a list... Thank you, Joshua, for Super Chat. If I had made a list of biggest disappointments of last zoo year... Zoo Tycoon. Zoo Tycoon is it, because I was like, ooh, because I, I really do love this theme. Yeah. But... Arc Nova with also the greatest expansion in a long time. That expansion is fire. Actually, it's water. <laughs> <laughs> it came out. But I love everything about Arc Nova. Just a terrific game. Um, I like that. My favorite thing is the cards, really. Yeah. That card yeah. selection underneath. Mm -hmm. It's just the idea of I want to let it get as high as I can to make the action better. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the river type thing down there. Yep. Yep. Very good, Tom. Oh, and somebody asked how often I play uh, 51st State. As often as I can, baby. Mm -hmm. All right. So is there a new number one for the people, too? The people's number two mm -hmm. has been on the list for five years. What was the list? And the last three years, it has been number one. Yes! Wait, hold on one second, y'all. Everybody take a deep breath. This Do is... we all have new number ones? This is this unprecedented. Yeah, but they, but for no, no, no. Let's revel in this moment. <laughs> Let us revel. If that doesn't deserve a $30,000 donation from somebody, <laughs> I don't know what does. Oh, right. Four new number ones? Surely oh, wow. that's worth 30 Dropping Gs to somebody. Dropping one spot. All right. Oh, wow. Well. Because it has no dragons in it. That's correct, okay? Wingspan. Wow. I don't even like birds. <laughs> birds are stupid. Mm. Uh, still a very popular game, though. Yeah, Good yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. I remember the first year this was number one, I looked at the votes and I was like, huh. Not even close. It, it beat Terraforming Mars by a wide mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wingspan. Wow. We were the first con to have Wingspan. We had a Dice Tower Retreat in December. Yep. Yes. It was very exciting to have that. Mm -hmm. And I, I played and I was like, this is, this is really good. I didn't expect it to shoot to number one, though. Yeah. Very, very popular. And again, any game that's this popular will have all the YouTuber commenters all coming the, and going. All the haters. Well, actually, I hate it. Mm -hmm. But most people like it. So, yep. whatever. Awesome. Wingspan. You're number two. All right, enough of this. Let's find the number ones. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you all next time. Thanks, guys. Yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for all the super chats. Uh, Mark Markias, thank you very much for the super chat. 
Yeah, we'll see you guys uh, in a couple of weeks. To announce the number, the new number one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can you imagine? That is actually... Well, we're at 247. That's good. Okay. That actually... I really despise that one. It's oh, like, that's terrible. Like, it, it's like a, the, uh, the cliffhanger. We or that whole, before we give you our new number ones, let's mention mention 50 honorable mentions. <laughs> like, oh. God. Yeah, right. I hear no. you watch, Mojo. No. Mm -hmm. All righty. Let's All do right. number ones. Here let's we go. do it. This is so exciting that we've got four new number ones. Seriously, that's great. All right. My number one is actually up 17 spots. Okay, I'm going to guess it. I think. I think you know what I, it is. Well, I don't know what it okay. is. Okay. But... Does it have a new version that came out this year? Yes. Wow, it's your number one? This has already always I been... I do Raw has always been one of my favorite oh. designs of all time. But now, look, we have, thanks to 25th Century Games, we have the definitive version of this classic game that finally has a production that's worthy of the design. I think this is Kenizia's best game, clearly. I think uh, he's a master of auction games, and this is my favorite of his auction games because it has that push-your-luck element as well. Mm -hmm. And this is a game that does certain things like set collection. You know, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, a set collection game and an and, and auction. Oh, okay, an auction game. But there are so few games, auction, set collection games, straight Euros, that evoke the type of boisterous, around the table, shouting that this game can do. That's true. There's some, this game just brings out this incredible, ah, you know, you're, you're rooting for other people to get the disasters, and you're rooting for Raw to come up when, uh, when you do be bad for your opponents, and you have, every player has this feeling of being able to drop the hammer and call Raw. You know what I mean? So it gives us so much player agency. And it's such a clean rule set, as his games always are. I think this is a relatively flawless design that's been proven through tens of thousands of play tests, right. uh, you know what I mean, or plays. Um, and yeah, nobody's it, wondering if this had, might have an imbalance. Right. This no, this game is rock solid, but yet still fun, still has that sense of randomness. You sure. know, that you need, I think, to create excitement in one of these types of games. And this production is like, okay, now I've got the heirloom version of this game. This is, this is it for me. This is number one. Oh, by the so, way, you need to, uh, have you seen the painted metal things? you got to paint your metal coins. I know, it looks amazing. You have to paint your metal coins? They, it looks so sharp. Yeah, so I saw it online and someone just basically filled them in with like a little paint pen. Uh -huh. And yeah. they pop. They pop. Really you could pop. probably even wash them and make I them I hired a couple better. of... Um, Willing children to, to do it for me. Or do you do you feel like they're going to do it with the precision that is needed for this game? I feel like they did it with the precision of thanks for dinner. Okay, all right. You that fed sounded, them. That sounded so bad. Actually. That did. You fed them. <laughs> First of all, I, was that before or after the public beating? <laughs> mm -hmm. We have three new number ones, and we have over three thousand people. Yeah, three thousand watchers. All right, That's Rick, fantastic. we have four new number ones actually. Richard Saunders, four new number ones, yeah. Chaz Brown, Pixie Head. Thanks for all the super chats. Yes, that is thank fantastic. you, everybody. All right, folks, my uh, number one it was seven last year. It is a crossover with all of you guys, okay. I think. And it is Marvel United. Wow, your new number one. This has not been on your list so far. Uh, I sure hope not. <laughs> I sure hope not. That's awesome. That is cool. Mm -hmm. Marvel United slips up here to number one for quite a few reasons. The big one being, this is so easy to play. Yeah. I love, we, we talked about this feeling of you can make it hard, you can make it easy, you can make it complex, you can leave it simple. It is very modular. You can throw out new locations and it feels different. You can change out the baddie for a different one or a baddie that is actually three baddies running around mm. and that feels different. You can solo this thing so easily. It's just such a... It's, it's one of those games that it's easy to sort of overlook because it's readily available it's marble marvel with chibis and it's cheap mm -hmm. like you can get it for 12 bucks we just yeah. covered a while ago um it's also super fun to play and mm -hmm. i i'm happy to knock out a game of this any old time 
I can play this solo, and in fact, I play it tons solo. I do too. By setting up three characters, get some card holders, and I'm off to the races. That's yep. the way I play. I play three-handed solo. Mm -hmm. um, it's fun. It's engaging. I can beat it if you know. It's not, yeah. I'm not going to win all the time, but right. I certainly you can win. I just find this one to be an easy game to play. Mm -hmm. And the reason it slides up here is because it's gotten the plays this year. Yeah, you know, I've been able it. to play it. And there's so much content that you can play. Like Tom was saying, he's played pretty much everything that's out for this game, right? Yeah. So far. I have. So what's your favorite way to play? Mine's the Sinister Six. I love the Sinister Six. I just like good old normal yeah. three-handed. I make up a story in my head like, oh, um, uh, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales is uh, calling on She-Hulk and uh, Hawkeye, and they're going up against, uh, I don't know, uh, who did I just play against? Who was the last person? Fing Fang Foom? No, no Fing Fang Foom <laughs> yet. No, I forget who I played against. Yeah, and that's it, and I play that out, and it's, I have a great time with that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Rod says that the yeah. list was great, but his wife said it was fine. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah, this game is wonderful. I, I just have a good, easy time playing this one. Yeah, wow. That's, uh, that's awesome. Uh, I just want to say thank you for to Daniel Garza for Super Chat, to Spencer Brustet for the super chat and for Brand Boom for the super chat. Yes. Actually, Spencer, two super chats. All right. All right. All right. My number one was number four last year. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, so I do know what it is, but that's it's awesome. In my car right now. I'm playing it tomorrow for sure. Do you just kind of keep this with you at all times so you can bust it out anywhere? And... It, I, it actually sits in my office for this purpose. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what it is. You really don't? This it's is the game reason I played more than any other game right. this year and last year. This is the reason why Not Tom has second. to always have a bag of throat lozenges with him at all times. <laughs> oh, oh, ready, set, bet. Ready, yes. set, bet. I mean, I played it. It, it, it. When I was making the list, I was like, this is ridiculous. It has to be my number one. Right, you play I will all drop everything to play time. this game all the time. I played at World Series of Board Game. I played at the Retreat. I played at East. I played yeah. at, well, I tried to play it at West. Honestly. Um, I'm so sad about that. And most times, you're playing it, but you're... Most often running it. I sure, think. but for yeah. me that also that is, is playing, playing it. it yeah. And I get such a kick out of the joy on people's faces yeah. when they play this. I mean, when we we stopped at the place at the that store in Atlanta, and that's pretty much all I did. Yes. But mm -hmm. people just had so much fun. I just I just get it, such a kick out of it. Ready, set, bet. Just fantastic for me. Wow. And, and maybe I'll I'll cool on it as the years sure. go by. But for now, I mean, I'm ready to. I'm I'm excited. I'm playing it tomorrow. I was like just so pumped about it. You'll be playing it on the cruise quite a bit, I imagine. I haven't decided it yet. <laughs> you may I'm not bring it there. It, I mean, it'll, well, it, there's a copy in the library. Yeah. My personal copy. I haven't decided if I just want to like do other games. Yeah, I got you. Because when Ready Set's better around, it tends to decrease my other game play. Yeah, because people sure. just keep coming to it. Yep. All right, the People's Choice is just a mild switch here from two to one. It debuted at two last year, and went to number one. And it's a crossover with only me because these guys don't like it as much. What is it? Ark Nova is wow. the new People's Choice number one. Okay, okay. Wow. Which is not a huge surprise. It's very popular. Um, I think on Board Game Geek, it's in the top ten. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. I wasn't actually expecting this to surpass Wingspan. No, but because it because it's heavy, right? I mean, that's what surprises me. That's why it wouldn't surprise me being number one on BGG, but on our list, it does surprise me. I think me. the theme helps a lot. Yeah. It makes sense when you tell people, you're building this pen for this animal. Mm -hmm. For this animal, you need to have a point from Africa. I, I, the theme helps a lot, actually. Sure. And it you're does. also taking a lot of small actions that make sense. You are, but I think about the difference between the complexity of this and Wingspan, and oh, it's no, it's, it's huge difference. Yeah. Someone says yeah. this is only the fifth people's choice, number one. Really? So let's see. So Arc Nova, the last three years it was Wingspan. The three years before that it was Scythe. The four years before that, it was Pandemic. And before that, I don't have a... They said it. Scythe is pretty heavy, too. So, yeah, maybe it's... it's uh... Like, some games... I don't know. I, where would be the one from that many years ago? Is it on this sheet? I don't know. That... Oh, yeah, the two years before that, it was Dominion. Okay. Wow. So, there, there you go. go. Uh, Man, this was, uh, this was an exciting uh, culmination to this wow. list. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty stoked about that. 
We hope you all enjoyed our top 100 this week. We are glad to be done with it. We did celebrate with key lime empanadas we today. We did. Um, we are now packing up to go to Dice Tower Cruise. We have a, a, one or two videos going up this weekend, uh, but Dice Tower TV will be launching soon, mm. so you'll be able to go in there live and watch that with other people. Um, and then we'll have a few videos going up next weekend, and then the week after that, we're back in full force. All kinds of good stuff. Predictions for the year 2024 mm -hmm. of our of games that we think we'll be interested in. We got top and the upcoming top 10s. We got top 10 dungeon crawlers coming up, top 10 three-player games coming up, mm. all kinds of stuff in the future. Mike is going to... Uh, actually, I, know, I was going to say something stupid, but I, I lost track here. You What I'm doing? You mean? I was going to make something dumb up that you were oh. going to do, but I, yeah, I can't who knows? think of it. I'll do something dumb. <laughs> you so can count on it. What was different, though, is that's... So that's Standard operating procedure. That's correct. If I do something, it's gonna be dumb. Yeah. <laughs> that's a wrap, folks. <laughs> Check out our Kickstarter. If you like, if you like this video. Thumb it up, because that would be nice. You know, the more thumbs up, the more people watch this video. Yes, thank you. But also check out our Kickstarter at DicetowerKickstarter.com. If you like it, think of us as like Netflix, you know? Yeah. How much you pay Netflix a month? We're twice as good, so pay us twice as much <laughs> as Netflix. Um, or, or not. But either way, we hope to see you all soon. Until then, I'm Tom Basil. I'm Mike Delisio. I'm Z Garcia. Woo! Thank you. Thanks, everybody.